For more insight into immigration and labor in the United States, let's bring in uh, Abel Nunez. He is the executive director of the Central American Resource Center, or CARSEN, which offers a variety of programs to empower immigrants in the United States. Abel, uh, so, go so good to see you here on this Friday evening. Thanks so much for coming in. I kind of want to get right to it and, and, and talk about the type of work that immigrants are doing. And if you listen to a lot of lawmakers in the United States and a lot of others, they've been demonized uh, in, in, in just almost amazing ways if, if, if you listen to what people are saying. No, uh, I think we've lost uh, the narrative, but the reality is that immigrants are needed for this economy to be vibrant. Um, the reason why the U.S. has had a better recovery from COVID than, in, than any other nation is because of immigration. Those are reports that have come out. Um, there are reports, uh, for example, from the Immigration Research uh, Initiative that states that the new asylum seekers in the next two years for every 1,000 workers, they will generate $22 million in aggregate wages, which means spending power, which means tax revenue. So those are the things that we need to ensure that our economy is strong. And we also have to remember that our population growth is not, uh, it's negative at right. this moment. And we're gonna need new immigrants because we are not producing enough workers in the United States to keep pace with what we're going to need with our economy as we move into the future. You know, enable all. There's also this this argument that uh, many of these uh, immigrants who do come through the southern uh, border, they're simply doing jobs that other Americans don't want to do. Have the jobs that immigrants do find in the United States? How has that changed over the last half century or so? Well, I think that, that always uh, immigrants find spaces where they are welcome. We know that agriculture has always been big. The service industry has uh, been big. Construction, like you mentioned earlier in your piece, has been big. Right. It continues to be. But we have to remember that our economy is changing. And we're moving into a gig economy where even native-born Americans are forced to go into Uber drive. And actually, a lot of Venezuelans are finding a very profitable way to enter into the food delivery business. We're seeing that in New York. We're seeing that in Washington, D.C. And that is because it's easy entry. It is good money, uh, but it's not in a formal way. And so what we need to be able to do, besides giving them permits, uh, it's also to create a formality around how they're entering these industries. So one, that they're not exploited, but two, that they're conforming to the rules of how things need to be done. Okay, let's talk about that word exploitation, uh, because if you just listen to what people are saying, you know, put the wall up at the border, and what the Donald Trump and his supporters have been saying, I mean, just the people who do come across, you've heard what he said in the past, that they are rapists, they are criminals, uh, doing things like that. And that is that narrative that leads to this demonization. A lot of these people who do come across turn themselves in and say, I left because I'm a refugee from Venezuela or from another uh, nation, either South America or Central America. And they do come and they say, you know, I want to become a U.S. citizen. I want to begin on, on that, that trail. Kind of explain to viewers how that works. And not everyone who comes across the border is illegal just because they don't have the visa when they get here. You know, we're at a very difficult point in our nation. We're at a point where the population is shifting, uh, where this country in the next really 30 years will become a majority minority country. And I think that the dominant culture sees that and is scared of any newcomers. So it's very difficult to do that. But all the studies show that immigrants have less criminality than the, than the dominant culture. They actually provide resources to the economy. And actually, there are no studies that show that any benefit given to a current immigrant group incentivizes others. That is what people think happens. And we are now dealing with people that think things are going to happen instead of looking at the studies that show what actually is happening with our community. Why do you think so many immigrants are entrepreneurs? Well, I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at what, what they needed to do just to get to this country. And I want to clarify something. Most immigrants do not want to leave their country of origin. If conditions were different in their country, they would stay because people want to stay where they were born. They want to speak their language. They want to be in their culture. But they're forced to leave. And anyone that has to uh, uh, endure 
what they have to endure to get here. They have an entrepreneurial spirit. They want to survive. These are the people that are hungry. These are the people that we need here. And these are the people that have made America great throughout its history.